like to welcome you to the regular meeting of the Clay Township Board. This is Monday, April 30th, 2012, 6 p.m. in the community room at the John Hensel Government Center. The first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, I pledge, pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I forgot to mention that I'm Mary Eckert, Chairman of the Board. The first um, the, the first order of business after the pledge is the approval of minutes. We have two meetings. One is the organizational meeting on January 17th. May I have a motion to approve those, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Same sign? No. And the minutes from the February 2nd, 2012 special board meeting. Any discussion on that? Motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 The next are public comments. We'd like to welcome you to make those comments. I have Rick Sharp. We'd like to call you the microphone, please. Thank you very much. Uh, I am Rick Sharp, as noted, and I'm appearing before you tonight as the president of the Carmel City Council. Um, it appears in your December meeting that we should have taken the time to have someone appear on behalf of the council at that time because in reviewing the record I can see that there was a serious misunderstanding and I'm really here tonight only to do two things. One, tell you what our thought process was at the time and then two, be available for you later this evening uh, as you move through your agenda if you have any questions. Um, when the earlier proposal was made regarding the use of COET uh, to fund park operations this year, um, our council was under the impression that this was something that had been arranged between the trustee and the mayor. And we weren't trying to force anything down your throat, far from it. Uh, if, we, uh, if we had thought that this was unclear, uh, we would have had a representative here to speak to the issue that evening. So I can certainly understand the reaction of the board members thinking that Carmel was presumptively spending money that's really under your control. We did not and do not intend that. Since then, we've all taken a step back. Uh, the mayor, the trustee, uh, Mary, and myself met uh, with Mr. Bosma. We discussed through what the intent had been so that you would be presented this evening with the full picture. Um, I know Mr. Bosma had sent me an email back in December, and I gave a, a, an answer that I thought was adequate. And it really was, well, we expect you know, you'll do what you wish to do now we won't have anything so trite. Uh, tonight you have, uh, you have an amendment to the interlocal concerning parks that very specifically states what our intention was and I hope that and I know that you will give it your due consideration and I wait to uh, answer any questions that you may have and, and thank you again for the time this evening. Thank you. Mayor, would you like any comments no, on this? I, All right. I think that uh, Mr. Sharp said it very Okay, thank you. And uh, the second request to address the Township Board is Walt Fryhopper. Here to answer any questions. All right. Thank you very much. Um, the action item tonight is the adoption of the 2012 Township Assistance Standards and Guidelines for the Hamilton County Trustees. Doug? Uh, every year we are supposed to uh, bring our, our guidelines for Township Assistance and basically tonight uh, you can see on the document you have we have to notify the uh, the Hammond County Commissioners uh, uh, to let you know what we uh, the, what guidelines we follow and uh, we have increased it from hundred percent to hundred twenty percent of the federal poverty guidelines uh, because we felt like that was the hundred percent was pretty low and uh, you can see that we had all township trustees which has been presented to the County Commissioners and then you have a copy of the Administration and Standards uh, handbook that we have used and they have not changed it since 2006 so basically it's the same the thing that normally will change is our, our federal poverty guidelines on the the amount that is it's changed every year uh, so um, uh, that just gives you an insight as far as uh, what's required of us um, we, you have our hours in front of you 
you have to at least be have uh, 14 hours a week that you do township assistance well of course we do it all week long when we get a call so we take care of it pretty quickly uh, normally uh, you have 72 hours uh, of course we take it care of a lot quicker than that so basically I just need your guys blessing um, uh, and uh, approve the guidelines I presented to you this evening we have a motion to adopt Paul. so moved second all in favor say aye. aye 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 any discussion no all right well we already we we put it in the motion let's let's finalize it all in favor say aye 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 all right information items discussion on use of park funds from the non-reverting park capital fund number 1250 i will turn it over to our attorney trustee and members of the, of the board um, it, councilman sharp gave a good summary I think of uh, that as we all know there's been a history of miscommunication really I think is what it is uh, on the finalizing a third amendment to the the uh, parks interlocal agreement and in fact there was even uh, one period of time where there were uh, competing amendments that uh, that were adopted and, and consequently not effective so in order to fix all that up we sat down which is exactly how you solve most of those problems and realize that it was just miscommunication and uh, you have before you a proposed third amendment to interlocal cooperation agreement which I'll briefly I know one of you just haven't had a chance to look at it yet so I will I'll just step through it real quickly and it's not for your consideration tonight, but it's for your review. Uh, it's my, uh, I've, I've requested the only thing that we don't do with each other is adopt, one of us adopt one of the bodies, legislative bodies adopt something without both bodies saying, yeah, this is the route to go, and kind of avoid that competing amendment again. Of course, that's just my request. I'm not an elected official here or policymaker, so it's just, just a casual observer on getting to yes. Uh, so, um, the uh, the portions that I'll briefly mention uh, there are six or seven uh, points to the interlocal agreement third amendment the first is to clarify the long-standing provision uh, in the interlo original interlocal agreement and also impacted by one of the amendments restricting the use of COET funds generated through the lease purchase of the Monon Center from the building corporation that generates a significant amount of COET uh, funds. The original agreement said that <clears throat> those funds could only be used for capital projects at the Monon Center. There was a second amendment that said it could be used for capital projects anywhere in the system. But this amendment, if ultimately adopted by both the board and the council, will say that it can be the, that COET fund that is generated by the lease, the bond issue, can be used for any purpose, operating or capital, that's included in the parks budget, the approved parks budget. Okay, so as you recall, if you accidentally paid operating expenses, technically, you would immediately lose your appointees to the board. It's just the way the agreement read. So everyone agrees that that's probably that I've spoken with agrees that that's probably a good direction for this and that's language for you to consider uh, the second provision is one that you've seen before uh, it was in a prior unsuccess the competing uh, amendments very similar language and that's just a pledge by the township that the first one million dollars of that COET fund that is generated every year will be appropriated and held by the township for the, for the purpose of funding any Monon Center shortfalls, okay? And the process, this is an area of clarification with the council, the process is very simple now. If it's in the approved budget and they have a shortfall in the Monon Center, the park, the joint board, the joint parks board passes a resolution stating it with evidence that shows it sends it to everybody and then the trustee has the authority to distribute those funds okay just it removes there was a provision that the board had to this board had to approve it the city council had to approve it it just was unwieldy and this is very simple 
it's uh, if they didn't didn't get there then uh, then the trustee essentially has the authority just to distribute the funds out of the co that you have already <coughs> appropriated there's also a provision in there that I think was originally suggested by the council that said if for some reason they get overpaid they hold that for next year okay uh, <clears throat> section 3 has a special distribution of COET funds in 2012. Uh, it provides that the COET funds that have already been appropriated by the uh, by the uh, town township rather will be distributed in the amount 2012 only of 2.610 million and change to fund the entire parks operating budget. Okay, and that those were the discussions that. Uh, Councillor uh, Sharp had referred to that the mayor and the trustee had come to terms on in order to address uh, budget issues. Uh, paragraph four is a reiteration of what should be happening, but some desired to have it reiterated that the Monon Community Center uh, Fund 109, there would be a joint budget making process in that, just as you do for your other joint budgets. Uh, so that Monon Community Center fund that they'll either be making or not making the budget of uh, you all will be sitting at the table with the with the council in uh, having that in your normal budget discussions there's also a provision in section 5 and this it, this really just documents what's happening now there was a day when uh, both I think legislative bodies felt there was inadequate not adequate reporting on a monthly basis on the budget situation that has been rectified in practice I think is happening well every month this just documents that it's a requirement and will happen in the future as well uh, with a monthly report uh, to the Common Council and the Township Board and the uh, other folks uh, and that's a written report that isn't a show up and say something every month although there are occasions where that happens but it's a submittal on a monthly basis of the written report essentially that is currently being submitted today uh, those those were really the well there were two two more those were the primary discussions of our meeting after the meeting it was brought to my attention that there had been some discussions among uh, participants in the meeting individually about changing the interlocal cooperation agreement with respect to the park board's budget for some reason in that interlocal agreement it says that their budget has to be submitted by June I think it's June 1 every year which they have for years pointed out is a early estimate earlier than everyone else significantly and sometimes because of that earliness uh, results in under or over estimations so uh, we've drafted some language that says that the joint board's budget will be submitted uh, no later than July 15th or such earlier or later date as is established for the submittal of budgets by departments of the city okay so this year I think it happens to be January or, or I'm sorry July 15th it might be July 18th it might be July 10th next year this will allow flexibility in that regard and then um, the last item uh, substantive item number seven was something that uh, was kind of a pet project of Doc uh, Dr. Dillon, excuse me, lost his name there for one second. One of his concerns uh, that he continually raised was in the that, that there is a significant amount of county option income tax that's generated by the bond issue and lease payment associated with the Monon Community Center. And uh, state law is unclear what happens to debt instruments in the uh, event of a consolidation, either voluntary, uh, the voluntary one's covered. If there was a voluntary consolidation of city and town township it's quite clear what would happen there under the statute if there was an involuntary dissolution of the township such as by act of the General Assembly it is unclear and it's been one, one of many holdups on that legislation advancing it is unclear what happens to debt instruments mm -hmm. uh, dr. Dillon and several of you as well were of the opinion that you all want to be sure that that instrument if there is a termination of the township gets only into the hands of the city 
and consequently the county option income tax that is generated by that is controlled by the city, presumptively used for Monon Center or whatever purpose, but doesn't go to other units not involved in your joint construction project. Mm -hmm. So that proposed language deals with that. It makes it very clear if something should happen, essentially, that the city will pick up the township's lease obligation. That's what generates the county option income tax. And the last two provisions are just amendment boilerplate that had been in your others. So with that, uh, long explanation, but I know uh, <coughs> you hadn't had a chance to review it yet. Very happy to take your questions. I think the, the thought is at your next meeting that this will be up for you to consider for adoption. So I would ask uh, in the next week or so if you would take time to read through it and think through it just a little bit and uh, get to uh, the trustee or myself any comments. Uh, the one person that I, I did hear back from Councilor Sharp today I know the mayor will want to take a look at, at this and um, haven't heard from Doug Haney yet, which is fine, but there may be some stylistic, this has to be an ordinance of the, the uh, city as well, so he may have some input on that. But I'd like to get him a final final from your all perspective here in the next week or two uh, so that both parties can move forward, get the Would, job done. Will there just be one document? It circulates among us. That's, that's how we've done it. It's a little impractical, wow. but that is how we've done it in the past. And uh, the successful ones have been accomplished that way, usually uh, being adopted as an ordinance first. And then here, if that doesn't work, if we need to adopt it here first, we'll figure out how to make that happen and still get it in ordinance form. Questions? Paul? Brian, I have one on Section 7, Okay. what you just talked about. Yep. As you said, we have a voluntary plan in place if we are consolidated into the city as opposed to the involuntary consolidation. Right. Section 7 is basically just our statement, our wish on what we want to happen. It still is not, it doesn't uh, place into the uh, General Assembly I mean, it's not binding, of course. It's just our position statement, right, more than anything. Yeah, it's, it's the written agreement between the two entities, which is enforceable like uh, an ordinance or township resolution under the Home Rule statute. So uh, I think it would be, you're right, you've detected that it, this, if this were to uh, contravene state law, mm -hmm. then I'd say, ugh. You, you know you're on shaky ground right but there's no contravening state law so this should uh, should prevail so it gives puts a little bit more teeth into the involuntary uh, takeover yeah that uh, we've already placed our lot with the city yeah and with regard to let's let's just say that uh, a uh, township dissolution legislation were to proceed I, I find it doubtful but let's just say it does, it could. Uh, and let's say that in that legislation, it stated as state law that all debt instruments of a township would go, let's just say to the county, mm -hmm. instead oh. of to a city, let's just say it did. I would argue, uh, first of all, if I was in a position to stop something like that, I would, because it'd be bad law. Uh, if I'm not, and I was arguing as a lawyer, I would say that that would be a statute that would be um, in contravention to a contract in existence mm -hmm. prior to the enactment of the statute. And I would feel pretty comfortable about, rather be on that side of the argument than on the other side. Okay. Yeah, so it's not, you're right, it's not assured, but it, it's about as good a belt and suspenders as you can, as you can create, I think. Okay. But everybody has to be comfortable with the language. So again, I'd like for you to really read it through and not say four weeks from now, hey, you know, I saw something in there that has a, I see that's a problem. If you could identify it in the next week or two, it'd be, when you, you know, when you identify it, we'll deal with it. But it would be helpful if you could do it in the next couple of weeks. We want that to have some real tea when it's finished, yeah. that number seven. Yes. Yeah. Number three, which provides for the million dollar to be appropriated and held by township to backfill any deficit. When there is no deficit. Actually, that's two. Two well, is I'm, the I'm going off your bullet points. I'm here. sorry. Two is the backfill of the deficit. 
three okay. is the one time section 2012. Two, all right, section two. Yeah, you're looking at my bullet point, and I, I didn't follow That's that right. exactly. Um, this when, is the, when the Monon Center does not have a shortfall, yes. the township reserves authority over that money to do with what we would. Yes, but you but by this agreement, you would have to hold that. I would read it that you would have to hold that $1 million in COET for the year. Sure. And then the year right. when it's not used. <clears throat> well, you'd have to hold it until the end of the year uh, because there might be uh, 400. I mean, I suppose there are circumstances, not likely, but you could have a large deficit. Let's just say there's a big deficit in December. I have no idea about the Monon Center's finances, so it may be ridiculous to think there'd be a million dollars. But technically, this says you're going to have a million dollars. It's going to be there for the year to, to backfill. That's the way it's been drafted a couple of times. I have never asked if it should be 250000 a quarter, and if the quarter goes by, then it's, you know, I it's don't, free. I, I, I don't have a problem with the language or when they get paid or don't get paid. Just at the end of it, it uh, comes back to, it's, uh, at the end of the year, if that money's not spent, there's a million dollars being held somewhere. Yes. And then the next year, you got to do the same thing. Has to, yeah, it has to be appropriated. And you, you've actually, you appropriate that as part of the budget every year. Okay. You appropriate all that COET money just in case, right, and mm -hmm. encumber it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this, you really have to have a million dollar appropriation available at all times. Okay. If there is, you said if there was any overpayment that is held by the parks until the following year, yes. would that decrease the amount of holding from the following year's appropriation? No. Uh, but I can see why you might raise that question. It doesn't say that today. It does say that it will, let's say by some circumstances, they said we're having a $100,000 shortfall by the end of the year. That gets paid to the joint board, and it turns out by some circumstances, it ended up only being $50,000, say $50,000 more. This says, that will apply to next year. Any requests made next year that applies first. It doesn't change. It doesn't really reduce the one million dollars that you have to have to hold it. That one million dollars being held is Moving really at all time. It's yeah. It's forever. So I mean, it it wouldn't increase. Let's say you gave them fifty thousand. We have to then have a million. But if annually, that's what it says. We can change that if that's if that's the will of the board my second question is about the one-time injection which I don't I, I, I don't see 2.6 million dollars is a lot to, to chew and I, I guess my question the only the question I have before discussing this and I don't see any reason why the city and the township can't work together to resolve something but I think an explanation is owed as to your 101 budget that you guys, the tax that comes from the taxpayers that goes, that funds the parks. I assume that's what this is all, this injection is covering. And if so, why, where did the money go that you are needing us to inject the money to cover it? I just think we're owed an explanation on that. State law says that um, COET money shall be distributed in the uh, event of an annexation. The, there's two formulas involved. There's a formula how it's divided among counties, the collection formula. And then there's a formula when it arrives at the county, how it should be distributed among all the entities within a county that receive COET. And it's a complicated formula. And state law says that is basically a comparison, and Brian, feel free to jump in. You know, townships, uh, cities, counties, housing authorities, county housing authority, and uh, they say libraries all receive a portion. And it's based, in essence, on the relative assessed value, as say, between the township and the city and, and the county. And so when, when a city, for instance, annexes or a town, the there's another statute that's meant to work with this one that says you have a year to start providing city services after an annexation. And so property tax starts to come, unless you abate it, but property tax normally would start to come within a year. And so it's timed 
the property tax is supposed to be timed with the start of the services. You wait to start your services a year after the annexation, that's when you start to get your property tax. The co-ed statute is written the same way, which makes sense. The money follows whoever's providing the service. The county's providing it, city's providing it, township's providing it. When it switches, the money switches at the same time. Well, the, I've had been having this discussion with the state for about 10 years. They don't do it that way. They didn't start. They said, we know what the formula says. In fact, their general counsel at one point for the people that figured this out down at the state said, we know you're right. We agree with you on the law, but practically we can't do it that quickly. So we have to base that distribution on what happened two years ago, not one year. In the case of the Southwest Clay annexation, that means the city loses about four and a half, five million dollars forever, which we should have gotten that first year. Now, a lot of that money went, went to the township. The answer, what the state told us to do, they said, work with your township. You've got good relationships with them. I'm sure you guys can work out something. We did not want to switch this. Even though we know it's what the legislature intended and wrote, we did not want to switch it statewide because we just don't have the staff to figure it out that quickly. So that's, that's the genesis that suggestion is this is a way to more or less make the city whole for the service provision that that we're providing had uh, had um, the law been properly enforced that money would have come directly we believe to the city of Carmel Brian do you have any thoughts yeah, on I'd just make one adjustment to what you said <coughs> on uh, the coat is divided in uh, by proportion of levy not assess value Oh, you're okay. right. I yeah, also forget that okay, yep. assess value and, and tax levy. It's yeah, yeah, it's by levy, and beca <clears throat> because people started uh, not people but units started uh, increasing debt. There were planners telling people go into debt so that you can increase your coet mm -hmm. distribution. You may not need this station or whatever for five years, but do it now, and it will generate this much coet. The law was changed so that it's the current levy, but uh, they adjust back to 2005 on, they don't consider post-2004 uh, capital projects. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> but your yeah. capital project was in 2004. So it continues to leverage uh, the county option income tax, whereas others, the, the law was first changed, I think, in 2005, said, okay, enough of that program. I don't, I, I can't either say yes or no, Mayor, to the delay. I haven't gotten involved in that issue, and you've had those conversations. I have not, but it well, sounds I, reasonable. I understand, to some point, the delay and the difference in timing when the money comes and when it's, we, we handled it with the fire department. Even though you guys don't, I'm going to use this word, I mean, entitled to the money that covers all of the township yet, we covered the full amount because we're already using your services. The city's already servicing that area. But the city's not servicing the parks 100%. The township is still funding that almost fully. And we're the ones that incurred the $55 million bond. So I don't, I mean, I, we have the levies talking about, and I just don't, I don't see where, it almost sounds to me, almost sounds like, and, I, and I'd love for you to argue me, tell me differently, that you feel like that money is yeah. yours already. That, that's a good point you raise, it's, it's, and it's a point I keep making, it's not our money or your money, it's, it's our taxpayers' money. And taxpayers throughout the township pay the county option income tax. And I'm suggesting we just pay for the parks out of the county option income tax, which has been by, paid by taxpayers throughout the township for this one year, pay all of that. And yes, it would help the city taxpayers to do that, but they've also paid about 96% would be city residents have paid that, but it's going to a joint township-wide department. Um, so I'm suggesting we just take the county option income tax, which again is paid township-wide by a member of the township or a citizen of the city. Um, goes into a fund, take that money paid by both sides, use it for a service that goes to both sides, which is parks. And I, I can't